What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Captain Nick YouTube channel. And this week we are tackling the ever present VRAM issue in prepared P3D, prepare 3D version 5. As uh, many of you know, if you have swapped over, that uh, now that we are rid of pesky DX11, we have crept back into out of memory issues, but this time it's actually VRAM and not uh, system RAM. So we've decided to make this video um, going over some of the scenery and graphics options and their effects on VRAM. So let's get into it. So starting off, we're gonna take a look at the baseline settings that we're gonna be running today. So this is kind of based on what I run on a normal basis. Um, as you can see, we're doing this at uh, 1080. I have uh, 2048 textures selected I've gone ahead and unlocked the frame rate. Not that it really matters for our test here when it comes to VRAM. And then I've took off FXAA and MSAA, uh, left anisotropic filtering at 16. Um, and then looking over here at the world, see that I'm kind of running pretty much middle ground settings, I think, for uh, V5. You know, I know a lot of people are, are pushing the sliders all the way to the right now. Now they're kind of getting a handle of what's going on. Um, but as you see, I've turned clouds off right now for this part of the test. We'll come back and we'll turn those back on. I also have weather set at uh, clear skies. Um, that way we can kind of get a, a little bit better of a, a baseline reading with these settings. First thing we're going to look at is the anti-aliasing um, on here. Just for uh, shits and giggles, right? So running all the same settings across the board here, you see uh, between MSAA and SSAA, there's not much of a difference in VRAM usage, um, anywhere from 3.3 all the way down to 3.1. Um, I would say that that's probably more of uh, within the margin of error here, especially as you look around. Um, I'm doing everything right outside Randolph Air Force Base in the default flight in the, what is that, the F-35 um, at those settings that we showed earlier. And then obviously I'm just going back through and just resetting the settings as we go through, taking a screenshot and posting a little picture here of what's on. Um, so when it comes to VRAM usage, I'm not seeing any real difference between any of the different uh, anti-aliasing, uh, built-in anti-aliasing methods. Obviously you're gonna have a frame rate hit, but that's not what this video is about. This video is all about VRAM. So now if we look at the global texture resolution, I decided not to include some of the lower settings because probably I would think no one's going to be running those lower settings, but that's just me. So this is one of the few ones that we're going to see a pretty big difference when we go ahead and change it. So at 1024, we're looking at 2.9 gigabytes of VRAM. At 2048, pretty big bump up to 3.7, but not a huge bump up when it comes to 4096 at 3.8. Now, my sim doesn't seem to like to load half the time if I leave it on 4096. If I boot up a flight and I boot it up at 2048, it tends to work every single time, and then I can load up 4096 if I want. Um, but obviously, like I said, for some reason, it's about 50% of the time. If I have it set at 4096, it likes to crash um, when it's loading the plane. So this is definitely one area where you may be able to, to save on uh, some VRAM. I didn't notice a massive difference between 1024 and 2048, but uh, everyone's eyes are a little bit different. So now when we move over to the global page on our settings, we're gonna start on the left-hand side here at the top with level of detail radius. Uh, once again, we revert, revert back to the original settings and then I just dropped it down to low. And as you can see here, there's a steady increase of VRAM usage as you bump it up from low at 2.3, medium 2.5, high 2.8, ultra 3.0, and then max at 3.2. Um, you need to determine uh, as far out as what you can uh, comfortably see and display and doesn't tax your computer. But obviously uh, there's a, a pretty big difference here between low and then max. And there's a pretty big difference in visual quality between low and max. But your mileage may vary. So moving on to uh, all the way down here to the terrain uh, texture resolution on that global page. We go all the way from uh, 10 meters down to seven centimeters. I'm gonna 
chalk that 10 meter one up to some sort of uh, fluke or system error because there's no way that the 10 meter one uses up more vram than the rest of them so i don't know if something else was just lingering in the background but it is what it is um, not a huge difference amongst the board a um, couple hundred megabytes um, i will say that uh, i didn't notice a huge difference between the 60 centimeter down to the 7 centimeter but once again this is using the default stuff um, maybe if you have a scenery that actually has 7 centimeter uh, terrain uh, textures it'd probably be a good idea to use them obviously it may use more video RAM at that point but that's it for uh, terrain texture resolution so going over to the right side and we look at scenery complexity slider starting with very sparse all the way up to ultra we got 2.8 very sparse, sparse at 2.8, normal 3.0, dense at 3.0, very dense at 3, and ultra at 3. Um, didn't seem to make any real difference here. Now, with that being said, if you're over some add-on scenery, and maybe they need to have the, uh, the very dense slider to see some of the stuff, that may change. But being that we were over a little default uh, Randolph Air Force Base stuff, this is what you get. Um, people complained with my last video. Oh my God, you didn't do it vanilla. You didn't do it. Well, here I am doing vanilla guys. And now someone's going to complain. Oh my God, you didn't do this at, you know, Latin VFRs, Miami or whatever it is that's crashing everybody's computers. Win some, you lose some guys. But uh, anyways, scenery complexity, not a huge chain, game changer as far as VRAM goes at Randolph Air Force Base at least. All right, moving over to the next slider down, Autogen and Scenery Draw Distance. Hey, look, we got low at 3.2, medium at 3.2, high at 3.2 gigs, very high at 3.2 gigs, and extremely high at 3.2 gigs. Yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of interesting, huh? Maybe because the textures are already loaded and it's just drawing stuff? Um, obviously, you're going to have a much bigger frame rate hit at uh, extremely high versus low because it's drawing more triangles. So, moving on. Well, hey, looking at uh, autogen vegetation density, the next slider down. Once again, we got uh, none at 3.1, sparse at 3.1, normal at 3.1, dense at 3.1, very dense at 3.1, and extremely dense at 3.1. What's weird is that the none is the same as extremely dense. So maybe it still loads the tree textures? I don't know. But it doesn't seem to make any difference as far as uh, VRAM goes. Obviously, once again, it's one of those things where your frame rate's gonna take a hit. Um, but do as you please with what you got as far as the computer goes. All right, so looking at Autogen building density, same thing as the last four 3.1 at none normal at 3.0 dense at 3.0 very dense at three extremely dense at three that none's probably realistically probably the same i don't know maybe it's rounding up or down or whatever the case is seeing a pattern here everything on that left or uh, i'm sorry that right side in that little box with the autogen stuff seems to not really play a whole lot with your vram as far as in my testing, but obviously every single one of these, the, the further you push it right, the more it's gonna push your frames. So, uh, my suggestion is if you're having VRAM issues, Autogen may not be the place to look, but I am no expert. I'm just going by uh, the testing I've done here. Yep, so looking at special effects detail, I have the uh, the distance set at medium. To be honest, it, distance really didn't make any effect, um, which is why I didn't do separate ones. But as you can see here, uh, between low and high, that's 100 megabytes. So that's probably within the margin of error. I'm not real sure. I would think maybe some of the high ones for some of the stuff that it would draw maybe add a little bit. Um, definitely no real noticeable change here. So yeah, that's for uh, that's all I got on special effects detail. All right, and now the moment everyone has been waiting on, clouds. So starting with the legacy clouds, I have the visibility at the lowest, which is uh, 60 miles. Once again, we're doing the fair weather theme, and we're going from low, medium, high, and then max as far as the cloud coverage density. Obviously, we had the volumetric fog and all that jazz ticked off there. Um, low, medium, high, max, all exactly the same on these legacy clouds. I, I 
honestly I don't recall if it was the same in uh, 4.5 very well maybe but I personally expected this to maybe be a little bit different between the low medium high and max maybe different when it comes to different weather settings though but I chose a weather setting that would be easy for us to do this and the beta atmospherics and then swapping over to our cloud draw distance I went ahead and left it at maximum coverage on this one just to, to see what sort of hit we get um, and this is obviously miles out uh, as far as visibility. So we got 60, 70, 90, and 110, all with the exact same VRAM usage. Now, obviously, if you have it at 110, that's a much bigger frame rate hit than at 60. And same thing when it comes to the cloud coverage, um, the density. Um, not seeing any real difference in VRAM usage, but uh, if you got uh, some spare VRAM and uh, you got some extra frames you want to get rid of, go right ahead and crank it right up to 110. And last but not least, we're going to look at the enhanced atmospherics, the beta atmospherics. Um, it's my favorite. I love the way this thing looks. Um, just the little haze and everything, the little shaders that they add to it. It looks phenomenal. Um, the clouds are extremely pretty. It's cool to, to fly through them. But uh, if we look at our VRAM usage, so obviously it's much higher at the same settings of everything else um, coming from the legacy clouds or what, 2.7, 2.8? Um, the very least we're looking at 3.2 at low and medium, and then a big jump to high and ultra, um, 600 megabytes roughly. Um, so for me, it seems my computer likes medium as far as frame rates over, you know, say 90 miles with the, uh, was it medium coverage for the legacy clouds? I think it looks better too. So that's usually what I run. I run at uh, the medium on here. Uh, hopefully these get uh, worked on. Obviously it's in the quote unquote beta stage, right? So true sky is hopefully going to get worked on and we'll get some cooler stuff, some extra layers of weather and whatnot. Um, I left out a couple things on this one, specifically the water. I'm going to make another video, a follow-up video, uh, going through the different water settings and what it looks like in the different uh, weather settings, because obviously if you have it on calm, it's not a whole lot going on with the new water, but uh, if you crank up the wind and whatnot, it looks pretty cool. So we will take a look at that at uh, probably my next video. I'll go through and, and take a look at the water. If this has been any help for you guys, you know, uh, once again, my name's Nick and uh, hit the like and hit the subscribe, throw a comment down below. Tell me I suck like uh, everyone did on the V5 one for not running a, a vanilla, right? Because who actually runs vanilla prepared or FSX or X-Plane or any flight simulator for that matter? Um, you know, prepared is kind of a, a sandbox. It's, it's a it's a program that's designed to be modded it's not designed to be a standalone um but anyhow once again uh, like i said if, if this has been any help you know hit the like um, hit subscribe leave me a comment tell me i suck or tell me i'm cool or give me a high five or tell me to go back to my dirty ga flying in uh, a2a planes and orbex and all that stuff that's that's dirty and mean because I used it in my last video. Anyhow, it's Nick. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, guys. I'm going to go have a stogie and uh, have a good week, guys. Bye.